my worst case scenario. I would much rather use mitochondrial DNA primers, but I don't have any that are universal. Well, I'm not too confident in these nuclear markers because of the contamination risk. As Dr. Newton goes into the dark room to expose his DNA film, he knows it's all or nothing. Let's see if we got anything. Oh, there we go. There's Skookum cast one hair, Skookum cast two hair. There's the stool sample. So it looks like we can go ahead and do some sequencing. Bits of plexiglass and pipettes, coupled with the broad knowledge of DNA extraction techniques, may ultimately separate myth from reality. Each of the scientists and experts who have delved into the Sasquatch mystery understand the importance of their efforts. They also understand their efforts represent separate pieces of a complex puzzle. What follows are 12 conclusions concerning the ongoing Sasquatch mystery. For the past hour, we have challenged our scientific team against the best alleged Sasquatch evidence available. DNA tests, fingerprinting, forensic audio analysis, anatomy examinations, and misidentification studies. Does this mystery need more research? This is a question you may have to answer for yourself. Our fingerprint expert, police officer Jimmy Chilcott, examined many footprint casts in an effort to find dermal ridge patterns that point to other known primates. A hoax or a new species? I've come to the following solid conclusion. Number one, that there is a great ape living in North America. Number two, that the friction ridges of this great ape are not human nor known primate. This conclusion may come as a shock to some people, but I stake my reputation on it. Dr. Benson, a biological audio specialist from Texas A&M, analyzed recordings of alleged Sasquatch vocalizations to determine if they were from known animals or from an unknown creature. In our analysis so far, it does not seem that this source fits into those groups. However, it does appear from the work we did comparing it to a human voice that it is probably primate. And that, of course, includes human as a possibility for the source. Dr. Henner Fehrenbach studies patterns in the wild. Fehrenbach created a statistical database of recorded measurements taken from years of Sasquatch footprint evidence. These patterns might indicate the likelihood of an unknown species living amongst us. The graphs that have emerged show generally a bell-shaped curve for foot length as in this graph as well as for heel width and ball width of the feet. Such a distribution would be expected to result from a living population rather than from fictitious data. These studies suggest that in all probability we may well have a large primate walking about in the North American forests. The Memorial Day footage suggested that the creature was running at speeds across this rough terrain beyond human capabilities. Robert Taft and Associates and Pacific Survey's task was to provide exact data on size, speed, and gait of the creature. In consideration of our field data, we're prepared to offer the following scientific conclusion. First, the creature in a video has a height of 5.3 feet and has a leg length of 2.5 feet quite similar to human proportions. Second, the creature is running at a speed of 8.56 miles per hour. Contrast this with our demonstration runner who was able to negotiate the same path at 17.1 miles per hour, twice as fast as the creature. Third, we found the creature's stride to be 4.25 feet long. Derek Pryor, our runner, used a faster stride of 6.8 feet along the same path. However, they were unable to explain the apparent protrusion that appears on the creature as it moves into the woods. We are still puzzled by the fact that at the end of the tape, the creature appears to grow taller by 8 inches. If this is a real animal, one explanation is that it may be carrying a young animal that has climbed higher on its back. Further analysis will be necessary.
Dr. Craig Newton from BC Research in Vancouver, British Columbia, tested hair, saliva, and scat samples taken from several different sites, including the Skookum cast site. While DNA evidence can be the most conclusive, it can also be the most elusive. Apple sample that we received that had saliva potentially in it, it refused to give any amplification product, so we couldn't conclude anything from that. The stool sample gave us lots of bacterial DNA, but trying to pull out a nuclear animal gene with it uh, gave us nothing but contaminants. In the case of the skookum cast hairs, uh, again, both the sequences that we obtained were so human-like as to most likely be uh, contaminants, either myself or the uh, gatherers who collected these samples. So for the future, we need to make a much more concerted effort to rule out these things. There are technical details that just require more effort, more time, more commitment. Dr. Dara Swindler, world-renowned retired professor of anatomy from Washington State. Dr. Sarmiento, an anatomy expert and primate behaviorist of the American Museum of Natural History. Along with Dr. Jeff Meldrum, a physical anthropologist from Idaho State University. And Andrew Nelson of the Center for Motion Analysis and Biomechanics were given the tasks of evaluating anatomical evidence left behind by the Skookum body imprint, footprints, the Patterson-Gimlin footage, and its 3D motion track reconstruction. After analyzing the biomechanical issues of the Patterson footage, I find it very hard to believe that somebody in 1967 could have fabricated the intricacies as evidenced by the soft tissue irregularity that's seen on the upper leg. The study of biomechanics at that time was just far too primitive. The Skookum impression shows clear evidence of animal activity. Deer, elk, coyotes, but some of the imprints don't seem to belong to any other animal in the area that we know of. Now, some of these imprints, especially the heel-like imprint, is quite deep. It must have belonged to a large animal of considerable weight. Of that body cast of an animal, I have isolated this material here, which is the lower leg. This is the heel. And this large bump here, this ridge, is the Achilles tendon that it goes from the leg down to and attaches to the uh, heel and it helps us elevate our foot when we're walking. So in my opinion, the impression was not made by a deer, a bear, or an elk, or was it made artificially? The Skookum body cast is that of an unknown hominoid primate. I've weighed and considered the evidence for a North American ape based on the Skookum body imprint, based on the Patterson film, based on hundreds of examined footprints. And I've now reached a point where it seems more incredible to consider all of this a series of spurious hoaxes spanning decades, if not centuries, than it is to entertain the likelihood that a new species of higher order ape may exist and may soon join the ranks of the family of primates.